Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the first verse. It said, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Go down to verse 8 of that same chapter says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And I want to say this tonight, that preaching the Bible, preaching and teaching the Word of God is a must. And we've got to have a clear understanding of Scripture and how to live according to the Word of God. Amen? Right. Amen. 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 But at the same time, we've got to know what's going on around us in our world. That. Amen? Yes. So, Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 56, talking to the Pharisees, he said, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye don't discern this time? Right. He was talking to the preachers. Yeah. You can discern all these things in the sky, but why is it that you can't discern the time you're living in? That's right. And he says, yea, why even of yourself judge ye not what is right? There is a right and there is a wrong, folks. Amen. And we've got to live in the right. And that's by the word of God. Yeah. We can't just stick our heads in the sand and not know what's going on. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in Hosea 4, chapter six, uh, verse 6, says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Which means we better know what's going on around us. We, we were manipulated last year through the media yeah. with several different things. Right. While horrific things were going on, Todd, behind closed doors uh -huh. that we didn't know about. That's true. I want to get into this, and I probably won't be able to cover all of it, but I'm going to give you as much information as I possibly can while we're here. I've only been studying on this for about a week because I've been studying Elijah. But but this just came, I saw the headline and it came into my spirit. Uh-oh. That's the first thing I said. Uh-oh. And I went over to my mom and my dad's and I said, do y'all know anything about this? Mm -hmm. And we began to talk about it and the more I began to learn about it, Sister Mary, I said, oh no. Wow. This can't be happening. But it is. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand something. The first thing I want to address tonight is the term gender. Gender. You hear this a lot in the news. Gender. Scientists are now saying that there are more than 64 genders now. 64 genders. Matter of fact, uh, but 64 genders and or sexes. 64 of them. I didn't know that. <clears throat> I just went by what the Bible said and God said I created male and female. Yeah. There's only two folks uh -huh. The Bible said that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 1, 27. Right. Male and female. There's only two. You read on down in that chapter and you'll find that he created the animals the same way, Brother Chris. That's right. He didn't create ten gen different genders of a dog. A dog is a male dog or a female dog. Right. Right. Amen? Amen. Right. So let me explain to you in simple terms. When you were born, you were either born a baby girl or a baby boy. Yeah. And that was determined by God when you were conceived. Amen. Yes. Period. Right. No gray area. Now, 
The following information that I'm going to give you, I got from a website called Teen Talk. It's a very popular website that teenage children are visiting and chatting on. Okay? Here's what it says. And I'm taking this word for word. Gender identity is how a person feels. And who they know themselves to be when it comes to their gender. Now it goes on and says, In our society, the genders that are most recognized are male and female. That is usually identified by a person's anatomy. However, gender is not based on a person's anatomy. It is based on who they know themselves to be. If you're not sure what to call a person, it's best to ask that person what they would like to be called. It is always up to us to decide how we identify and how we express our gender. However you decide to identify deserves to be respected and supported. End quote. That's what they're teaching our children. Do you realize that this is what teenagers are reading? No wonder our kids are confused by the time they get to be 16, 17 years old. Come on. That's correct. They say it doesn't matter what your, excuse me folks, I'm going to be blunt here. They say it doesn't matter what your genitals are. You can say you're anything because it's up to you. You can call yourself anything you want to call yourself. And it's okay. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I want to get to the subject matter. The U.S. House of Representatives has already passed the H.R. 5 Equality Act, which would officially extend equal protection to the LGBTQ plus community. I guess they added the plus because they decided they couldn't add no more letters. So they just put a plus on the end of it now. And a, in a 20, in a 224 to 206 vote, the act incorporates sexual orientation and gender identity in the list of categories protected from discrimination in areas such as public accommodations, facilities, education, employment, and housing. The Equality Act must face the Senate. It's going on to the Senate. It's already been passed in the House. With equal number of Democrats and Republicans in the Senate, actually the 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 Democrats control that. If the bill were to go to a tie, mm -hmm. Vice President Kamala Harris decides the deciding vote. She's going to make the deciding vote. I don't have to tell you how that's going to go. Uh, yeah. Do I? Right. It is the largest pro-homosexual, pro-transgender pro-LGBTQ document in the history of the world. Now those of you that like Bible verses that go along with teaching, here's your homework assignment. Go read Romans the first chapter. You'll find every bit of this that I just mentioned is an abomination to God, folks, and it's a sin. Right. Now what? Now, now they will say, Brother Todd, what I'm saying now, right now is hate speech. Right. But I want to tell you something. The Bible is truth. It's love speech. The Bible was given to us because he loved us. Amen. Amen. Right. And before I go further, I want you to understand, I want these people that, that may end up watching these videos, uh, I am not attacking people who are gay, transgender, or lesbian, or whatever they say they are. We are supposed to love everybody. We're supposed to show everybody love. And I welcome anybody that comes through those doors, no matter how, what they've done or matter what they claim to be. But I will absolutely not condone and not conform to sin from nobody. Amen. Right. Right. We can't teach and preach things that go directly against the Word of God, folks. Those people need deliverance. Yes. That's what it amounts to. That's the bottom line. They need deliverance. Right. Just like some of us did. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. So we love them. We care for them. We show them the love of God. 
But I want to tell you what's going to happen just a little bit later on when you do that. After this is passed. If this is passed. See, the LGBTQ community no longer want us to agree with them anymore. They want us to endorse them now. We don't, we don't care if you agree with us. you got to stand behind us now. Mm -hmm. But see, I'm not going to endorse sin. I'm not going to agree or endorse sin or peddle sin. I'm just not. Now, the Equality Act has been called the most evasive threat to religious liberty ever proposed in the United States of America. Listen to this very carefully, folks. I'm trying to go slow as I can. It would amend the Civil Rights Act of 1964, forbidding discriminations on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. Now, wait a minute. The Civil Rights Right was a great act, in my opinion, because it said you can't discriminate against a person's skin color. That's right. Absolutely right. We should have done that. Should have been done as a country. Amen. We can't, people ought not be discriminated against because they're black or white. Right. Amen. It's true. Amen. But see, this goes way beyond that. Yeah. If it's passed, Chris, there will be an increase of instances where Christians and others are being punished unless they violate their religious beliefs in order to comply with this law. And that is just the beginning of unconstitutional chaos that we're going to see in this country. In addition to this, this is critical. This is critical, church. The act forbids appeal to the 1993 Religious Freedom Restoration Act. It forbid, did you, did you hear what I said? It forbids appeal. In other words, they cannot go back and say, look at the Religious Act of 1993. This overrides that. Wow. If they decide to pass it, it overrides religious freedom. Listen, faith-based hospitals and insurance companies could be forced to provide gender, gender transition therapies that violate their religious beliefs. If a hospital is a Methodist hospital or a Catholic hospital and they say, we don't do these kind of surgeries, guess what? The government will say, you do now or you'll close your doors. Children could seek to change their gender as young as eight years old, without parental knowledge or consent. Faith-based adoption and foster care agencies will be forced to place children with same-sex couples or lose their license. And it also demands that religious families be willing to accept and practicing LGBTQ minors in their home before they can even be approved to be foster parents. The act would dismantle sex specific facilities, sports, and other spaces. As a result, biological females would be, comport, would be forced to compete in sports with biological males. They will be uh, forced to compete for athletic scholarships. Now you have women that are arguing that it is not fair to compete with a man claiming to be a woman, and it's not. it's not. Even the other side is saying people should compete with their gender that was assigned at birth. Right. Assigned at birth is what, is what they say. It's even silly to say it that way. I wasn't assigned to my gender after I was born. When I was born, my mom and daddy looked at me and said I was a, I was a boy and they was going to name me Michael Allen Hill. They didn't wait till six months from now and, and, and daddy didn't tell mama, he didn't say, Ethel ain't reckon he's a boy or a girl. How are we going to assign him? 
No, God did that, folks. Right. Right. I said God did that, folks. Right. So every female that plays a sport of any kind should be very worried. Here's why. Sexual assaults on girls in bathrooms and showers could very easily escalate because a man could claim to be a transgender just to worm his way in to the women's sports team and in the women's shower and in the women's locker room. And guess what? This bill would say it was okay and they can do whatever they want to before. And I'm telling you, folks. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. Do you tell me how sick that is? Seriously. They don't even have to have the sex change. They can just say, I identify as a woman. And I want to play this sport with the women. Okay, you can do that. Guess what? I need to take a shower. I'm going in there with the girls. I'm going to change in the girls' locker room. You don't, you don't think sexual assaults won't go up sky high? Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, folks. Right. There will be no bathroom privacy when this bill is enacted. This bill would welcome both genders in every bathroom in America. You can say you can say you're a woman, and even if you're not, you can go right in the women's bathroom. Would you want your son or daughter? Would you want your little girl in the bathroom and a and a fifty year old man come in and say I'm a woman and, and he gets to use the bathroom right beside your little girl? Or a grown woman come right beside your little girl or your little boy and, and, and use the same bathroom as him? Right beside him in the same stall? I wouldn't. Faith-based schools and businesses could be forced to violate their belief regarding homosexual activity and LGBTQ behavior or face fines, censor, or worse. Even in the schools, a man could show up and teach children dress up like a woman. Even on the kindergarten level. Yeah. Now I want to show you a video clip. Okay? Uh, this, this is a man. A science teacher. In Madison, Wisconsin, who recently made a coming out video. Okay? And the school district allowed it. This was shown to every class of kindergarten through fifth grade at an elementary school. The male teacher also instructed all the students to call him by a woman's name an invented title of mix instead of mister. He also instructed them to call him by false plural pronouns. Now, you say, why are you showing me this, Pastor? Well, I want to tell you something, folks. It's for this reason. You need to know what our children are seeing. Hello, let me introduce myself. You've known me as Mr. Busenberg or Mr. B. You've known me as the person in the science room, as the person with the plants and the animals, as the person who builds and helps you build. Most of what you know is true. Most of what you know won't change. But there is one truth that I've hidden from you until about a month ago from my fellow teachers, friends, from family, I am transgender. Do you know what that means? Maybe you don't. Maybe you've only heard those words through the filter of those who hate and fear. I'm going to read you a story, and maybe 
it will explain that word better. And maybe it will explain me better. Let's begin. They Call Me Mix by Lawrence Rivas. I love this story. This story, this is really my story in reverse. Lords Rebus starts as a girl, and they grow into who they're going to become. I started as a boy, and I hope to grow into who I'm going to become. Boy or a girl? Are you a boy or a girl? How can you be both? Some days I am both. Some days I am neither. Most days. I am everything in between. It's about a seven minute video and he reads this story that he's made up. Now he's reading this to kindergarten kids, folks. First, second, third, fourth, fifth graders. Folks, that's demonic. Yeah. That's demonic. You can see the demons in that man's eyes. Yeah. No matter what he calls himself, he's a man. Okay? No matter what he identifies himself to be, he's a lost human being that needs to be delivered. Right. It's that simple. Yeah. But you see... There's a lot of parents that, that are backlashing over this, Todd. A lot, lot, of, lot of things going on saying this ain't right. Well, it's not. But guess what? Guess what? If this bill is passed, they can't say a word about what he just known. Not one word. Or they will be in violation of of the law because he has the right to force that sister Mary on those kids now you tell me we don't need prayer this church house ought to be full tonight church house ought to be full Sunday morning every church house across this nation ought to be full folks and we've got people that are sitting at home with their head in the sand that oh I, I well I, I did that Well, I'm a Christian. I've been saved. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. If you believe in something, you'll get up and do something about it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, churches who rent their facilities to the public we don't rent our facilities to the public. But churches who do this, which is large, maybe large churches who rent their facilities to the public, can be forced to rent them for same-sex marriages, LGBTQ events, and if they don't, they will be fined. Community centers and all of these things which if we labeled our new fellowship hall when we get it a community center, which we're not going to, but if we did, they would have the right to come in whenever they wanted to and do whatever they wanted to do in there, and we could not say no. If we did, we would be fine. Now, I've heard I, I, I've heard the statement. But well, 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 our church is protected. Our, no, gotta understand something, folks. This bill's gonna bypass all that. It's all it bypasses all of that. We can't. We, we're not. We're not allowed to discriminate anymore. We've got to let this go on. If we don't, it's gonna be against the law. Now, this is. This is, to me, this is, probably to me, this is the most heartbreaking part of it, Sister Mary. 
There is, a, there is terminology in this bill. In this bill. You can go online. You can look up H.R. 5, Equality Act. And you can go online and you can read the whole thing. Now they've got it worded where the average person's going to have to read it 5,000 times before they understand it. But, but if you read it long enough, you'll understand it. But there's a term in this bill called conversion therapy. Now, remember those terms because it won't be the last time you hear it. What it means is, is it puts a gag order on counselors from giving professional help to those facing unwanted same-sex desires or actions. Hold on. It's not just for secular therapists. It's for Christian therapists as well. In other words, what's that mean, Brother Michael? Well, simply put like this. If someone comes to your church and they say, I'm a homosexual, I'm, I've got homosexual tendencies, and I don't want to be that, more, that, that anymore, I need some help. Under this, you can't help them. If they say, I want delivered, I'm, I don't want to be a homosexual more, no more, I want to be delivered, guess what? Under this, you ain't supposed to pray for them. But guess what? I will pray for them. I will pray for deliverance, folks. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Under this bill, I can't pray they be delivered because that is trying to change them into something that they're not. That's trying to convert them into something that they've already claimed to be. You want to hear more? I got a lot more. Now, there are people who are going to use this. Be careful. Be careful. And I'm talking to pastors and preachers and ministers and anybody else. There are people who are going to use this to get into the church yeah. and see how we operate. Right. And they're going to use it to trap pastors and churches. Right. And the next thing you know, they're going to say, well, I'm a homosexual. I need you to pray for me. And you pray for them. Guess what? They can go and file a lawsuit on you tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Guess what? Do you want to know how the doors of the church can be closed? They can find you to death where you won't have nothing to operate on, folks. That's true. Listen, I want you to understand, I'm not married to a church building. I'm married to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I said, I'm not married to a church building. I'm married to Jesus. Right. We can have church anywhere we want to. And I'll tell you something else, folks. The church is not a building anyway. That's right. Right. It's not a building. It's a people. And the gates of hell's not going not gonna to prevail Amen. against the church. Amen. Amen. A building may be shut down. A building may be fine. But I'm going to tell you right now, folks, the church is going to be strong. And the church is going to stand. And the church is going to rise. And hell can't come against the church without the Lord stepping in. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, it won't ever come to that. Well, did you think the world had ever come to what it was now? No. 20 years ago? No. Did you? Listen, folks, we got a person that was nominated to be the Assistant Secretary of Health. That's a transgender. Have you seen pictures of him? Anybody seen pictures of him? Huh. Ran, 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 ran Paul grilled him. Grilled him the other day. I've got that video too, but I'm not going to show it. He's a person that says it's okay to take puberty blocking drugs. It's okay to take hormones that make you into something that you're not. Or testosterone that makes you into something that you're not. This is a person that they want to put over health. Of the, in the government? Right. 
Folks, this bill literally sets the stage for a ban on the Word of God. Yeah. Oh, there is, let me say this, there is no religious exemption to this bill. No religious exemption to this bill. Mary, they're going to have full reign. Full reign. Don't read your Bible, folks. Read your Bible. What, what do you think is going to happen when the end comes? Huh? Do you think we've just been preaching all this just because just we like doing it? Folks, I believe what's in here. Yeah. There's some things going to happen before we go up. Yeah. We're going to see some things. Yeah. We're going to go through some things. Right. And people that don't think we are better read the Word of God. Right. You can't say, well, I don't believe that or I don't practice that because of my faith. Well, that's out the window now. You, you can't say that no more. You're in violation if you say that. This, legisla this legislation would create many more victims like women in shelters who've been sexually assaulted. Women's prisons would even be forced to welcome transgender men. Do you realize how dangerous that would be? A man posing as a transgender could gain access to vulnerable women and make their lives even more worse. That's true. And all they have to do is say, oh, I identify as a woman. That's all they have to do. Easy as that. So, let's summarize this for just a moment. Take this all in. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Churches could be forced to host same-sex ceremonies. Churches could lose tax-exempt status for non-compliance. Colleges will lose accreditation for non-compliance. Non-compliant colleges will be ineligible to receive student loans, causing most religious schools to compromise their core mission. And if they don't, they'll close. If churches or religious organizations take overnight trips, including sports or mission trips, they will not be allowed to segregate rooms by biological gender. Biological men will have access to bathrooms, showers, anywhere they want to go. Cross-dressers could demand that they be greeters and ushers and anything else they want to be in the church. Well, they won't be in this church. Amen. And they won't be in daddy's church. Even the smallest slight, Brother Todd would give someone the legal right to sue the church. Now, if this is passed, religious freedom will soon be a thing of the past. Which means we will have to go underground. We can say we're not going to comply. We can say we're not closing our church. But folks, when they start levying fines, <laughs> we, can, we, we, can, we, can, we can be big and bad and say all that stuff if we want to. But when they start levying fines, they'll force us to close our doors. Or put us in debt so bad that we can't get out. This will be a wrecking ball to church buildings as we know them. Amen. I want you to know something, folks. Even if they shut them doors, they'll never shut our mouths. Right. I said, even if they shut them doors, they'll never shut our mouths. That's right. Amen. There is a right and there is a wrong. And I will never stand for sin. And I will never compromise for sin. Amen. I will not do it. Amen. I'll stay here and preach for Miss Pulpit till I, they'll have to drag me out kicking and screaming. And, 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 and I may eat them words. And if I do, yeah. that's okay. 
Somehow or another, all the church got, got, got the feeling somewhere along the line that they was better than Peter and better than Paul and better than all the disciples. Look what they went through. If people today went through what the apostles had to go through, they'd have quit a long time ago. Some of them quit now. And ain't gone through nothing. Well, that was free. But listen to this, folks. Even if it gets shot down in the Senate, they're not going to stop with this until they get it done, Mama. It's, if, it, if it gets voted down, they're not going to stop. Do you know that they're already writing amendments now? It ain't, been, it ain't been to the Senate. They're already writing amendments just in case. Already making provisions just in case. They're going to push this thing through one way or another, so they think. Right. They don't just write amendments ahead of time when it ain't even been voted. They're already doing that because they know how bad it is. They know how bad it is. But yet the House of Representatives pushed it right through. You remember the president promised to pass this bill within his first 100 days of office. Remember him saying that? I'm going to pass the Equality Act within my first 100 days of office. We let that go right over our head and I did too. I did too. And I thought, man, he just pulled one over on us until I started reading about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Folks, that may be his main agenda all along. Yeah. They might not even care about anything else after they pass this. Because mm -hmm. this is going to cause chaos, folks. Yeah. This will cause chaos. And if we got to have the church, have a church out there in the field, we'll just have to have church in the field somewhere. We got listen. The disciples went from house to house, didn't they? We just gather from house to house if we have to. But I'll tell you one thing: we ain't gonna quit having church no matter what. Amen. No matter where we got to have it, we, the church ain't gonna stop, folks. Right. We must continue to spread the gospel at all costs. Does anybody say amen to that? Amen. amen. It will not be easy. Let me tell you something, folks. The church in general has not addressed how dangerous pornography is. The church in general has not addressed that. We've avoided that subject. We, 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 we've had churches over the years that, have, that it has avoided the subject of how dangerous listening to music can be yeah. that's not of God. Right. Don't want to, don't want to, let's not bring that up. Don't bring that up. We don't want to hear that. Much less how dangerous pornography can be. But I want to tell you something. There is a direct link with the LGBTQ movement and pornography. Mm. One does not go without the other. That's a fact. This thing is coming like a runaway train, but God's still God. Can you say amen? Yes, amen. I'm going to depend on God. I'm going to trust in Jesus all the way. I can't have nothing. I can't have no hope but anything except in Him. Oh, yes, Amen? Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I've been criticized for even threatening to speak something like this from the pulpit. Well, here's what I've got to say about it. People say, well, we're pop politics and religion. You ought not mix that. You shouldn't do that. This ain't about being a Democrat. This ain't about being Republican. This ain't got nothing to do with party lines. It's got to do with right and wrong and Amen. sin. Right. That's, right. Amen. That's right. exactly what it's got to do with. Exactly. And if the church don't make a stand, then who's going to? Them? That's right. Come on now. Them? Come on. All them out there, they're not going to stand. Come on. Go right along with it. But the bottom line is we need to know what's going on. We've got to take a stand and it starts in the pulpit, goes all the way to the back door. So, Brother Michael, what can we do? What can we do outside these walls? 
Well, let me make a suggestion. I emailed the White House today. I emailed both my senators today. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you know what, Brother Chris? I'm going to email them again tomorrow. Right. Both the White House and my senators. Mm -hmm. Your senators are Marsha Blackburn and uh, Bill Hagen. You go to senate.gov, look under the heading senators, click contact. You can send them an email from right there. Tell them that you're not pleased. That this goes against what you believe. Tell them HR 5, that's all you need. HR 5 goes against what I believe. Please vote against it. Right. If See, we want to know what we can do as a church. We, we always talk about we need to stand for this, we stand for that. Folks, listen, when something like this happens... You got to get to the people that can make a difference in it. That's right. Okay? Absolutely. If enough people send that stuff in to the senators, then what happens is the senators say, wait a minute. We're getting all kinds of stuff about this HR5. We better take notice of what they're saying because they're the one that elected us and put us here. True. Mm -hmm. right. It's the only way you get them to notice. That's true. You say, well, we. That ain't doing much. Folks, it's better doing nothing, ain't it? True. I said it's better doing nothing, ain't it? Email the White House. You don't have to send nothing ugly. I emailed the White House and put a note in there that I was praying for the president. And I am. You don't have to put anything mean or crude. That's not what the church is about. Matter of fact, you send an email like that to the White House, they may call you. Be like we're supposed to be, folks. We're supposed to show love. Yes. Right. We're supposed to love everybody. And I don't want anybody to get me wrong. I love everybody. But I want to see the sinner delivered. Right. Amen. Amen. So let's stop talking about what we need to do. And let's do what we need to do. Yes, that's right. I hope this helped you. There are things going on in the dark, folks. We need to know about it. And that's all that I wanted to try to get out tonight. Mm -hmm. Is to just give you an idea right. of what H.R. 5, the Equality Act, really is. I would suggest you get on the internet, if you can. H.R. 5, the Equality Act. Type it in. You will, one of the first couple of links, you will be able to pull it up and you'll be able to read the whole bill. It's not very long. It's, I mean, it's a, if you read it slow, it's a 10-minute read. If you read it slow. Mm -hmm. Read it, I had to read it over and over and over and over. I thought, what in this world are they doing? Then I had to go do my research, and I had to, I had to find out some things about, from people that I knew knew about it. Right. You see, they want, they, they, they want you to be confused. Yeah. Yes, they want to confuse you. They, they, they write this stuff to where even the people are voting on it are confused. If I was voting on that right there, I wouldn't even know what I was voting on unless somebody interpreted it to me. Then you got one up there that they'll throw the bill out and just sign it. Then read it. Folks, when that happens, it's over. I said, when that happens, it's over. Hallelujah. Once that signature goes on that bill, it's put in effect. What can we do? We better do something. Now, I said that to say this. The main thing we need to do is pray. Yeah. The main thing we need to do is pray. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Folks, we got to pray. But we've got to know specifically what to pray against. Yes, that's right. Y'all heard me talk about warfare prayer? We got to know how to pray. And we got to know what to pray against. Be specific. Folks, this is a battlefield. This is war. Yes, that's right. 
So who will stand to their feet tonight with me and say, in the name of Jesus, I will fight this fight the best I can. God bless you, everybody stand.